Hey everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a look at Mercury in Leo making a trine to Jupiter in Aries. Um, this is a pretty exciting and dynamic transit. I think it's pretty positive overall, though there are a few shadows to watch out for with this transit that we'll talk about as well. But today I have five themes we're going to look out for with Mercury trining Jupiter from Leo to Aries and also five chart examples that should help us to um, illustrate the same themes. So uh, I hope you guys will enjoy this. Before we dive in, don't forget to like and subscribe, share your comments in the comment section, click on the notification bell for updates so you get notified when I have a new talk or I go live. You can always find transcripts of my daily talks on my website, nightlightastrology.com, where you can also check out my readings and courses. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to email info at nightlightastrology.com. All right, well, on July 23rd, coming up shortly, Mercury in Leo is going to make a trine to Jupiter in Aries. We are already in the engagement range within the next day or so, uh, which means that you're going to be feeling this uh, between uh, now and um, this weekend, maybe even early next week as the two planets are separating. Uh, let's put up the real-time clock and I'll show you what we're looking at before we get into it. Um, I'm excited because following this trine, by the way, we're also going to see uh, the sun moving into Leo and then making um, a trine as well. So this is really just the, um, the kind of giving us a warm up for what the sun's trine to Jupiter is going to be like. And that sun trine to Jupiter also is going to be coming in right around the time of the new moon, which is pretty sweet. That's going to be um, a very dynamic and I think very positive new moon overall. Um, so. Uh, you got a new moon that's got a trine to, to Jupiter following on the last new moon cycle that had a square to Jupiter. You're thinking about things that are starting to come together after a month where maybe they were, things were butting heads a little bit more. So I think this trine is also tipping us off to what the next moon cycle is about. All right. Well, uh, let me show you here. You can see Mercury and Jupiter moving into the trine. Let's advance this a little bit. So you can see on the 23rd, the sun ingresses into the sign of Leo on the day that Mercury is also making the trine. So this is Saturday. But you know, if we back it up, today's Thursday, you can see that the trine is, is just about hitting it's gonna by the end of the day, it'll be at that five degree mark. Uh, Mercury will which puts it within three degrees. That's usually the range within which you're going to start noticing. Uh, Maybe you've already been noticing it. Certainly, you know, it's not like there's only one set of degrees within which you start to feel something. Oftentimes at the ingress, the whole sign trine was being made as early as Mercury ingressing into the sign of Leo. So past couple of days, you might have already been noticing this. If you had a hard time uh, talking too much, you know, <laughs> Mercury and Leo is the showman who, you know, will just sit down and take over a conversation and then be like, oh, wasn't that great? Wasn't I just the life of the party? And then you go, well, maybe I talked too much. <laughs> so, so Mercury and Leo, I did, a, if you go back, I did a planets and profile episode on Mercury in Leo. And um, you could get a lot of information about Mercury and Leo just by going back to the planets and profile series. We're going to be making, we're making in the process or in the process of making a number of playlists so that if you go into the playlists, a lot of things are about to get more organized. Um, that's just a, a process we've had, you know, I haven't had a, 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 as much help as I do now with my social media game. So it's kind of, we're building and developing things. All right. Well, let's take a look. So we've got this coming through by Saturday and then we'll give it three degrees, which takes it to about Monday. So you could, you could probably be feeling this from now until Monday. I think that's, that's a safe range within which to, uh, anticipate the effects. So Mercury in the fiery sign of the lion, making a harmonious trine. Remember, trines are of the nature of Jupiter. So harmonious, beneficial, uh, generally conducive to support is what a trine is. And and um, hitting Jupiter itself, the great benefic in the sign of Aries. Um, so there's elemental compatibility. It's a pretty fiery trine. That's really one of the things that defines this trine. Um, but let's look at five themes that you might anticipate from this. So going down, okay, here we go. Moving some things around so that I can, okay. 
So five themes to watch for as Mercury uh, trines Jupiter. And remember, the, the, the I'm going to try to cover some of the shadows because Mercury and Jupiter can simply be about amplifying some of the fiery mercurial qualities um, or, or kind of pairing Mercury to Ju Jupiter together and sort of putting them on steroids. That may or may not be a good thing. Mostly, I think this is going to be experienced as subjectively beneficial for people. But, um, you know, there's always shadows to be aware of in any archetypal combination. And trines don't, I mean, you can... You know, I think it was Stephen Forrest that famously said, you know, you don't want a trine connecting a, a, so a, a kid who's drank too much and the wheel of a car, you know. So it depends on what's being connected and what's being amplified. And even positive aspects, uh, more subjectively beneficial looking aspects can have their dark sides. So we do have to cover that. But I, I say that as a qualifier because generally I think this one is going to be pretty positive. So the first one would be bold initiatives, pioneering thoughts or ideas. This could include inventions. If you are in business, it could be a new product. It could be the amplification or expansion of an existing product. Uh, it could be that you are getting ready to start something new. Uh, anytime you see the quality of pioneering, uh, blazing a trail, starting something new, uh, this is a planetary combination, especially in fire signs, especially with Jupiter and Aries, that says, you know what, I'm going to do something that's never been done before, or I'm going to start something new that I've been meaning to. And there's suddenly, you know, just the momentum or the inspiration to, to maybe even do something that you've been sitting on for a while. Well, I think I have to do this, but I don't know. And then suddenly it's like, I'm doing it. You know, so the, the boldness of Mercury and Jupiter connecting by a trine of the nature of Jupiter, real strong and in fire signs, real action oriented. Fire's motto is I will make the world, I will mold the world through my will to what I want or what I picture. It's very, um, you know, mold the world with the, to, the, to, the to the shape that I want it in through my will. Um, and sometimes, and for that reason, fire signs get called out as selfish or domineering or, um, you know, impulsive or too intense. Uh, but at the same time, without the fire, a lot of things wouldn't get done. So bold initiatives. Um, this is a, a combination that loves to start things and also uh, loves to invent uh, solutions to problems. So I would say pioneering thoughts or ideas. You could also put solving problems. Um, or or fixing something or saying or if something's gone wrong you sort of rise up and say I will fix it Jupiter Mercury says I've got a bright idea so that's the first one that I would watch for the second one would be provocative voices I'm going to give you some chart examples I'm going to give you five chart examples that illustrate all of these things as well um, from historical and famous people whose charts uh, were available online now, provocative voices could mean, or voice, it could mean literally the way your voice sounds or like a, you know, a radio personality or a writer or a thinker or anyone that stands out as like their mind is on fire, their voice is distinct, mentally, intellectually, or even literally the sound of their voice or the power or loudness like uh, Pavarotti, for example, I don't know his chart, so I don't know, but Pavarotti that's, it has that kind of Jupiter Mercury, like there's a big quality here. And it wouldn't surprise me if there was like a square or something in his chart. But anyway, so anything that, and it, not just a provocative voice, but like a provocative message, you read something that, or get a piece of information or someone makes a claim or you, you know, you receive w word that someone's even i mean it could not, not necessarily be a great thing i think a trine is more likely to get good news like you're getting promoted or here's an opportunity but could it be here's an eviction notice and it's just this assertion of power or will uh, uh, you know i'm strong this is what you're going to do like com someone commanding you to do something i don't think i feel like that's probably more typical from oppositions and squares with jupiter and mercury i think the trine is more constructive beneficial harmonious, though you could see, you know, people, messages, ideas, or thoughts that are sort of dom dominating. And, um, you know, so that's one maybe a little edge to be aware of. So provocative voices. Number three would be many talents or skills, people who have many talents or skills, like 
Mercury is skilled. It's a skilled technician. It's a skilled thinker. Mercury is a skilled writer. Uh, Mercury is a skilled philosopher. Mercury can do things with its hands like garden or probably, you know, in Leo, I wouldn't think necessarily about those things. Uh, but Mercury, okay, let's say Mercury and Leo, you have different theatrical or, um, you know, like a Leo, right? You, you're capable, your voice is capable of commanding respect and you're, a, you're an authority on a subject or something like that. would be very Mercury and Leo. Um, I think if I, if I think back on the people who I profiled with Mercury and Leo in the Mercury and Leo in episode, for example, Joe Rogan was one of them, I believe. I can't remember that for sure, but I'm pretty sure he was because someone just, I think someone just mentioned that to me. So if you think it, whether you like him or not, right. But you know, he's this kind of, you know, he's a, he's got a comedian and he's got a podcast that's pop popular, but sort of provocative. Um, and he's, uh, you know, he's got the King complex and, uh, not, and no, no judgment. Um, if you're into MMA, right. He's like the, the head lion of MMA announcing mixed martial arts. So, you know, that idea of someone who has, um, like he wears a lot of different hats. And that was one of the things I talked about with, uh, with, you know, Joe Rogan and a number of other examples of Mercury and Leo, people who have this kind of bravado or bluster or star power in terms of how they speak. But you may also see that they, that people who have their, like a lot of irons in the fire, the, you know, Mercury, Jupiter in a trine. It's like, uh, you know, people who have training in martial arts and yoga and they have a, maybe they have a doctorate in religious studies. And the, you know what I mean? It's like, like Mercury, Jupiter people, especially the trines are often people of many talents and skills and they wear a lot of different hats. Uh, and they may, with Mercury in Leo and Jupiter in Aries, you could see there being like some bravado or kind of like the muscular big personality who has either a big, you know, big voice or like a lot of different talents and skills, but they're kind of like a big peacock tail in the way they speak or talk. That's very common for Mercury and Leo. And then it just gets amplified with Jupiter and Aries. So many talented, uh, many skilled, um, and sometimes... With Mercury and Jupiter, there will also just be the idea of someone who is masterful, that they've mastered a particular skill, topic, uh, or ability. Um, and it could be something like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see like a an engineer, someone who's very masterful as a, as a carpenter or an electrical engineer or um, so something like that, where it's like the knowledge of Mercury, the skill set of Mercury and the the quality of Jupiter, maybe they own their own company, you know, they're like an electrician who a master electrician who owns their own company has a fleet of vans and a staff or something very Mercury and Leo trying Jupiter and Aries. So these are things that you could think about, but it could be in any, you know, I mean, uh, these are just examples coming off the top of my head, apply the basic idea, and you'll, you, you know, you can get a lot of different um, images. Number four, aggressive philosophies. This would be the pairing of Mercury and Jupiter as kind of muscular and machismo, but in, in terms of its intellectual qualities, that could translate into fanaticism or something that has a, there's a philosophy of strength. I think of, for example, like Bruce Lee, um, who, again, not to make a comparison to his chart, but just the philosophy of martial arts. It was something he lived by and talked a lot about. You know, that could be what I mean by aggressive. I don't mean, I'm not using the word aggressive pejoratively, right? I just mean muscular, strong, assertive, bold, risk, um, not risk averse, right? Like even the philosophy of someone who might be like a, maybe like a professional surfer or something, or someone who's like a mountaineer or an aviator, someone who's like, you know, you get a little bit of that maverick personality with Mercury, trying Jupiter and fire signs, people who are bold and, you know, they think life is, you know, kind of carpe diem. It's and, and so intense or aggressive or just bold and bright. It doesn't necessarily have to be, I think aggressive might sound sort of negative. So I want to be careful with that word, but yeah, anything that has behind it, the little chutzpah, you know? So, okay. Anyway, so that would be one to watch for as well. Now, number five, last but not least, I've kind of said all this already, but 
the bravado, the machismo, the tendency to want to fight with people over principles or ideas, fierce or muscular words, um, all of that could be amplified, but also very charming. It's as though you might give a pass to someone who would normally feel like meat heady and annoying, but you're like, well, you know what? You're actually really funny and you're, you know, you're charming. You see a comedian, for example, and the comedian might be a little crude, but they're smart enough to make you like you give them a pass because you're like, well, you're a little dirty for my sense of humor, but I'm giving you a pass because you're real. So really smart and interesting. And some, a lot of what you said made me laugh and made me really appreciate your intelligence. But then, you know, it was, I was able to get over some of what felt like maybe too much. So that it's almost as though there's a grace built into Mercury and Jupiter for, you know, the big, bright, macho stuff might be a little bit more appealing. And by macho, by the way, I, the machismo to me is something that, uh, you know, anyone can, can have. It's not just men, right? I'm, so I'm not limiting this, these qualities. The, the, the other charismatic is another word. I think charismatic has a kind of muscular feeling to it, but it's brighter, lighter, more contagious, you know, kind of like that. There can be with these, because remember Jupiter and Aries can be very fierce in what it believes. So you pair Mercury and Jupiter and it's like, uh, lots of conversations about rights, um, the it, um, it, like almost like executive decision making and uh, questions about uh, liberty and freedom and sovereignty. And, uh, you know, so it, I, I was blown away to find how many famous French people have this a, uh, aspect and something about their lives um, resembles the sort of spirit of um freedom uh liberation freedom of thought and i was you know i was just i thought well that makes sense given i don't know just just given some of the history of the french in intellectualism and french revolution and stuff like that I, I don't know much about um france or its history you know other than what i learned in school and i've never been there and you know don't know french culture very well but it struck me as i have a friend one of my best friends actually who is french and he uh, has told me many times that, you know, he feels like he was born in a climate that like his his family and culture in France, like really encouraged him to be like strong minded. And it was more common to like debate political ideas at the dinner table in a way that was um, like, f like, you know, like intense, but not like harmful. And I always thought that was it was interesting, you know, it was interesting reflection. And I was so I thought it was interesting that a number of French intellectuals showed up with this exact aspect when I was doing a chart search, whatever that's worth, you'll soon find that I my ability to pronounce some of the names in French is going to be terrible. But anyway, please, if any French speaking people are out there listening, teach me how to or show me maybe in the comments what I got wrong if I don't pronounce some of these names correctly. But on that note into the charts. So five example charts that I think will highlight some of these five themes. All right, well, the one is Simone Weil. How did I do? All right, so uh, let me just, I need to pull up my notes over here so I don't mess this up because it's not like, yeah, so Simone Weil was a French magistrate and politician who served as health minister in several governments, governments and was president of the European Parliament from 1979 to 1982, the first woman to hold that office. See that pioneering quality? As health minister, she is best remembered for advancing women's rights in France, in particular for the 1975 law that legalized abortion, today known as Loi V. From 1998 to 2007, she was a member of the Constitutional Council, France's highest legal authority. I find it fascinating that you have someone who is pioneering in her field as a politician, as a woman in government, and um, as someone who had strong, bold ideas, right? And you know, you can find this represented all across the political spectrum. So I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I just picked examples that really stood out and fit the archetypal mold here. Let's go ahead to number two on this list, which is Jesse Ventura. I don't know if you guys remember Jesse Ventura. I do because I'm from Minnesota, and he was the governor here for a little bit. Um, but he was a wrestler, so how's that for Mercury in Leo and Jupiter in Aries? Um, he had that big, muscular, macho, you know, skill. Did you know that in 
ancient astrology, Mercury was the planet of sports and of wrestling. Gymnastics, sports, wrestling, court games, Mercury was considered to be uh, the ruler of those things. Fascinating. Uh, so Jesse Ventura, wrestler turned governor. He blazed the trail. He was considered a pioneer. He was very provocative. And his voice, if you've ever heard it, is incredibly memorable. So um, Jesse Ventura, there you go. Uh, John Calvin. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not particularly fond of John Calvin's philosophy coming from the my Christian background. That was not the philosophy that I was raised with Calvinism. Um, but, um, you know, Calvin, John Calvin uh, was a sort of, you know, he was a prolific uh, theologian. He had a lot to say about um, Christian theology. And he is famous for, you know, his branch of, of Christian theology and his the doctrines that he espoused. Uh, you know, that is, uh, that is very Mercury and Jupiter in a trine. I would, this is just my personal opinion, so please don't be offended. I had to read him when I was in college as I went to a Christian school. I had to read him and I remember feeling like fire and brimstone. A lot of this is fire and brimstone. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe that's my own bias, but I will tell you that when I pulled up this search and I saw that he had the Mercury Jupiter fire trine, I was like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that makes some of you laugh. And if there are any Calvinists listening, all, all respect. Okay. Anyway, uh, so then uh, number four, and oh man, this is the one I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mess it up. And uh, Antoine de saint Expuri. Oh man, I don't know. I think that's how you say his name. He was a French aviator uh, who was known for being a pioneer in aviation. And he was also a poet, a journalist, and he also won a number of the highest literary awards in France and the United States National Book Award. And you've probably heard of him because of The Little Prince. I don't know. My girls love that. There was a movie version of that that was made not too long ago. And my girls love it. Um, and that little prince story involves like a kind of like a, I think he's a, it's a kid from the moon, if I'm remembering correctly. But anyway, he was, so he's an aviation pioneer, but he's also multi-talented. He, ha he has his many irons in the fire. He's good at lots of different things. And he wrote also a, uh, uh, children's book that was beloved and won a lot of literary awards. I think he's a great example of someone who fits the, the trine of a fire trine like this between Mercury and Jupiter. So finally, number five is Roger Carell. I'm not sure how you say his last name, but listen to this. And I didn't know who he was. I had to look him up. He's a French actor known for his recurring uh, film roles as Asterix. And he was the French voice of Star Wars C-3PO, the French voice of Winnie the Pooh, Piglet and Rabbit in Winnie the Pooh. And he also voiced Wally Gator, Mickey Mouse, Yogi Bear, Fred Flintstone, Kermit the Frog, Heathcliff, Danger Mouse, Foghorn Leghorn, Fat Albert, and many other famous characters in French. So isn't it amazing that what he was known for was having this huge abundance of voices that he did? Uh, voiceovers that he did for of famous characters in French. To me, that was amazing. I was like, that is such a perfect example of Mercury trying Jupiter. He's someone who literally did, he had many talents and skills, and he had a whole bunch of different voices that he had. Interesting. Well, I hope that episodes like this get you thinking, get you excited about astrology, teach you something new, and get you prepared for the transit, which will be uh, coming in over the weekend. So, that is what I have for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share your comments in the comment section. Click the notification bell for updates. Don't forget you can find transcripts of my talks on the website, nightlightastrology.com, uh, where you can also check out my readings and courses. Any questions, email us, info at nightlightastrology.com. That's what I've got for today. Take it easy, everyone. Mm -hmm.